Welcome back to Arcade, I am Super Tommy, and in this video we're going to look at snowfall particles in Phaser 3. So here's what the snowfall particles are going to look like. We have a snow image that we made, which is just a dot, it's a circle. And then we use different opacity to create this effect and we adjust the uh, particle parameters like speed and direction and gravity and things like that. Now we're doing it in our winter parallax demo, which if I just move it here, you'll see there's parallax here. And the snow continues through, um, through as you move. So we're using an emitter zone. The emitter zone is above the world and it's just going to rain down snow or snow down snow as you move. So if you are looking to see how to do that winter parallax that you see, we'll link to that video in the description box below. Now let's check out the code for this snow particle system. Here we are in VS Code. So this is the project or the demo code from the winter parallax video. The link is in the description box, so check that out. Now the first thing we're going to do is just add a new snow particle. So that's here on line 31. We're just doing this.load.image giving it a key, that snow dash particle, and then the path to our snow particle. Now, let me show you what that snow particle image actually is. It's uh, right here. It's just one dot. It's a white dot. You can use different images uh, to make your different particle system look a little bit different, a lot of different. So image is up to you. The simplest thing is just a dot, of course. This is, I think, a like 16 by 16 dot. So that's the image we are using. You can use something different. So back to our game class here, let's go down. So we added our particle system at the bottom here, right here. So we are creating our uh, particle emitter manager. So that's here on line 89. So we do this dot add dot particles using the snow dash particle key. That's the key that we defined above in load. And then in with our particle emitter manager, we're going to make a particle emitter. And that's particles.createEmitter right here on the line below. Now, you can see some of these values here, and you can adjust these. These are to determine how fast the snow, each snow particle is going to move in the y direction and the x direction, how much acceleration they have. So we're using min and max value so that it picks something in between those for random it's going to pick one of these numbers and then for you know scale alpha same deal here we just give it different numbers here for gravity we're, we're only adjusting gravity y just to make the, the snow feel a little floaty and then frequency just how often uh, new particles should spawn now what are there are three things that we want to look at specifically here to create the snow fall particle effect now, the one thing here is emit zone. The next thing is how long it should be alive for. And then we're going to do this offset so that if you're doing a side scroller and you want the snow to basically follow your player as a snowstorm would generally do, it'll keep coming down even as you move. We are going to do those three things. So first thing, emit zone. So the emit zone is the shape of, of the uh, particle emit area, basically. So you can give it a circle, give it a rectangle or some other shape. And in that zone is where the particles will spawn basically randomly, or you can at least specify it to be random. So let's just do that for emit zone here. Give it a object. So in emit zone, we're going to give it a source and our source is just going to be a shape source. So we're going to do new phaser dot geome for geometry dot rectangle. So we're going to make a rectangle here. And the rectangle is going to be um, it could be just the size of the screen, right? Because we're only falling, the snow falls within the screen bounds. But because we are a side scroller and we want to make sure that the snow is going to continue falling as we move, what we're going to do is actually make it three times, uh, seven times the width. So you're going to have one screen in the middle and then basically three additional screens worth, screen widths worth of snow on either side is what we're going to do. So what that means is we're going to do minus width. Now we have width of the screen defined up here from the scale manager right here. So that's the width of the screen. So now back down here, we're going to do width times three because we want to move it three screens to the left so that we have three on the left and three on the right, and then just one screen in the middle. So then we do this. So that's going to be zero. So that's X, Y width times seven is this is seven widths long. 
and then let's just say 100 for height this doesn't matter as much okay so next type we're going to give it is random so that it just randomly spawns in within this rectangle that we've defined next quantity we're going to set this to 70 you can you can adjust this number depending on how much snow you basically or how heavy the snowfall is for our example that you just saw it's not that heavy it's like a light snow we're going to do 70. so that's our emit zone now let's come down here for lifespan so lifespan is going to determine how long each particle is going to be alive for so we want it to be at least we want it to live at least as long as it takes a fall from the top to the bottom of the screen so that it looks like it's uh falling it doesn't just disappear in the middle of the screen let's do lifespan and here we can set a min and a max just to give it some variety although it probably doesn't matter too much since we won't see it once it falls off the edge of the screen we want to give it something so that it will be destroyed and then reused as another particle coming down so let's go with eight seconds minimum and then maximum let's do 10 seconds and that's our lifespan last thing here we want to follow the player since as we move we don't in this case we don't want the player to actually move out of the snowstorm in our example here, the snowstorm is for the entire level, and we want to make sure that as the player moves, they don't uh, the snow doesn't doesn't stop falling. So let's go with follow. I'm going to do this dot player. So this dot player here is our snowman, which we create up here. And then the last thing here is follow offset. Now we want to make sure that our particle system is always going to be offset out of the screen so above the top of the screen so here we're going to do x is going to be minus width times half so that it's going to be um, off screen here that way and then y is going to be minus height so minus height and we're going to subtract an additional 100 which is the height of our uh, of our mid zone so that's going to put it up above and we do minus half here because you know we made it seven widths long and we want it to be moved so that you get three on the left side and three on the right side three screen widths on each side so that's what that is now let's just check our preview one more time to make sure we did it right this looks pretty good to me it looks about what we had before now if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like now let's make sure that we actually did that scrolling thing correctly that's the key here so let me go right and we should still see snow and we do so that's looking good now let's go the other way and we keep seeing snow so that is the expected functionality here we don't want the snow to just disappear we'll just keep doing this a little bit more you can see there's snow now if your game is bigger or for some reason you want even more uh snow you can just add more screens to either side so instead of just times seven widths you can do nine widths maybe so just play with that number to get a better feel or a better effect depending on how fast your character moves the slower your character moves the smaller your particle emitter zone needs to be and if you change the size of your emitter zone your quantity may also need to change so just play around with those numbers there's no science here really it is whatever feels right and for more videos on game dev on the web with phasers 3 and other web technologies be sure to check out this video over here we've got all kinds of great game dev videos to help you make games on the web